Welcome back. Buy now, pay later, or BNPL, is an emerging retail trend where consumers can pay for in purchases in installments, often without getting tracked by credit bureaus. Our next guest believes will become a, a billion-dollar industry in Canada by 2028. For more on this and other retail trends, let's bring in Meryl Macansaras, managing partner at Arcus Consulting Group. Meryl, thanks a lot uh, for joining us. I notice uh, the buy now, pay later option when I shop myself online is becoming more and more common as an option. How is it fundamentally different than buying now and paying later with your credit card? So thank you for uh, inviting me on. Um, so the difference really is it's called a point of sale loan. What that means is it doesn't go through your credit bureau. It's a light check. Um, and so it's an expedited uh, loan in, in many ways. Um, and a lot of consumers have adopted uh, BNPL, the BNPL option uh, over the past couple of years. If you've been to a Canadian tire, you would probably be asked that question, do you want a 24-month equal payment option? Um, it's growing at about 20% a year, which is uh, notable because it's still at a small base of about $200 million. It's projected to grow to about a billion dollars in uh, 2028. The concern we have about buy now, pay later, uh, the the option is that after your period ends, uh, the, the interest rate goes up to even 37%. It's likely regulated right now, unlike, uh, unlike uh, credit card rates. Uh, so um, there is a big wave of uh, increases in the adoption of it, but uh, two years out from now, it is a concern because uh, our research, Arcus research indicates that consumers who have more than two or, or up to four loans outstanding are twice as likely to default at the end of their uh, interest-free period. Hi, Merrill. Uh, John here. Question, um, two questions, actually. One is just with regards to the demographics of uh, BNPL. Is this something that you see is more highly skewed towards, let's say, millennials, Gen Z, as opposed to other segments of the population? And of the um, uh, consumers that use BNPL, um, are they primarily consumers that don't have access to your credit card, or is it frequently clients that have actually multiple credit cards that are all tapped out? So that's a good question. So there is a demographic correlation with regard to adoption of BNPL. It skews younger, but not as much as we would think. Uh, and the reason for that is, uh, the economy has been great in 21-22. Consumers are tapped out. Credit card debt has increased to $4,200 from $3,700 in 2021-22. Uh, we're looking at 15% inflation over the past two years. Um, food is up 20%. Um, energy is up 50%. Shelters up 2x. So. Uh, it, it, in the absence of those uh, variables, I would say it would skew a lot younger, but we're not seeing evidence of a lot of evidence of it skewing uh, a lot younger uh, today. Moving forward, we don't know. Um, I mean, the analogy that I've heard is that is that it's like the consumers like Wiley Coyote um, is going to step off the cliff this year and is going to look down next year. Uh, the uh, $2.5 trillion of debt outstanding right now in the Canadian economy is growing at about $80 billion a year. Um, and so that is a big concern moving forward. The two variables that could drive uh, uh, BNPL is a recession, uh, job losses, or interest rates remaining high. So um, we, we do believe it's going to grow rapidly over the next couple of years. But then on, it would really depend on where interest rates uh, go to see if the adoption rate would continue. It's projected to be about $12 billion in the U.S. It's growing faster in the U.S. Um, and most of the cost is borne by the merchant, not by the consumer, at least in the first two years. That, that was a question I had. Uh, there are third parties, of course, that facilitate BNPL, Afterpay, Sezzle, Affirm, Zip, PayPal, a very familiar name, and Klarna, a name I see fairly often on websites right. uh, that I visit. Uh, they are the providers of this, and the merchant, uh, what, pays, pays a fee to these providers? 
That's right. So in Canadian Tire's case, um, they have their own uh, bank. So um, companies that have uh, internal resources are much likely to be able to manage this transition. Um, if the, there's a downdraft in the market or the job losses or rates remain high, um, yes, they do use third parties. So it is actually a, a cost item. What we do know is um, most of the growth in retail, which was about 2.4% in the first half of last year, 2% in 2023 and is projected to be about 1.6 to 1.8 percent this year has been based on consumers buying the same number of items that they have in the past but paying more for it so a lot of that top line growth we're seeing today is not from um, more purchases by consumers it's actually the same uh, number of items but they're paying more for it well, there was a reference in our introduction to our conversation to credit bureaus. Uh, is this type of spending, uh, BNPL, visible to credit bureaus? It is visible, but it's not. So it's a soft check. So it doesn't register the way a, a new credit card would. And that is a concern. Regulators should be looking at, uh, at this uh, service because of the rate at which it is growing. Uh, if it grows at about 20, 30 percent, and that's compounded. Um, so I, I, I would assume regulators are taking a good look at it. Um, if rates are above 32 percent, it's heavily regulated. And so you could be paying rates of 37 percent uh, with BNPL options that are available today. Just once, wondering once again, I mean, the, the, the demographic for, for the, the client that t takes a BNPL type loan, it, it kind of sounds like it's primarily, uh, it's not people that don't have any type of credit history or credit bureau. It's actually people that do have a credit history but need to tack on more debt. Would, do we have any numbers as to, you know, the average customer, how many credit cards they have if they're a BNPL client? Uh, that's actually an interesting question because it, it's counterintuitive in a way. Um, if you're using your credit card, uh, chances are you would not consider BNPL. But the average consumer has about 2.7 credit cards. Uh, but the way it is prompted at the point of sale is what drives uh, interest in considering a BNPL loan. It's uh, it's that prompt that makes a big difference, even if you're not distress from a credit standpoint, uh, chances are quite likely that if it's interest-free and it's a small purchase, then consumers are going to consider it. The average BNPL uh, transaction or the amount outstanding, the loan is about $135. But after two years, you end up paying about $7 for every $135 uh, outstanding. Um, so to answer your question, um, it's it does... We, won, we would assume it correlates with the number of cards you have, but not necessarily. It's the convenience app aspect that consumers consider at the point of sale that drives that choice. It's really not their financial uh, situation.